Okay, in this video I will be reading something that I wrote many, many years ago when I was uh, 22 or 23 years old back in uh, graduate school, doing my MA at uh, Arizona State University under Anthony Chambers, the great Anthony Chambers, and uh, Professor Wickstead, Timothy Wickstead. And I wrote a MA th my MA thesis on um, the Dada poet of the 1920s, 1930s, Takahashi Shinkichi. Um, and I uh, wrote half of the dissert half of the thesis is um, commentary analysis of um, sort of provides historical background about Dadaism, modernism in uh, Japan, its introduction into Japan, and then the other half, the next section, rather the three sections. First section is the historical background context. Second is the analysis of Takashi Shinkichi's Dadaist poems. And the third section is the translation of his uh, Makuwa Uri Shishu, which uh, I will explain above. And the poems that are included here, I'll read. Um, how many poems are there? There are 32, I think. 28 poems total. And they are taken from Makuwa Uri Shishu, Makuwa Uri Shishu, which is found, can be found in volume one of the Takashi Shinkichi Zen Shu which is four volumes published by Seidosha in 1982. Okay, so I'll read uh, bits of the commentary. This isn't the entire MA thesis, of course. Uh, just excerpts from the thesis, some uh, his back, uh, basic background information and so forth. And then the translations I will read as well. Okay, and I haven't looked at this or touched it since um, those days in graduate school, so there might be some uh, strange phrases or incorrect passages, so... Um, I will re now read it. So yeah, so take it with a grain of salt. Okay, here's the introduction. André Breton, French Dada poet and novelist, later turned surrealist, famously made the distinction between Dadaism and some of the other coeval artistic movements in Europe when he wrote that Cubism, quote, Cubism was a school of painting, Futurism a political movement, Dada is a state of mind. It was this emphasis on interiority and phenomenal representation that led Takashi Shinkichi, born in 1901, died in 1987, the subject of this article and the author of the following Dada collection of poetry, Makuwa Uri Shishu, 1921, to later assert that Dada was merely an imitation of Zen and that Tristan Zara, André Breton, and other European founders of Dada were in fact latent Zen Buddhists. Like Zen, Dada was a way of seeing and interpreting the world in a way that denied the existence of the self or ego, doubted the possibility of knowledge, and perhaps most similarly, relieved language of the burden of having to convey truth. As time went on, artists became more conscious of the connection between the two, and by mid-century, according to William Seitz in his art, The Art of uh, Assemblage, Assemblage uh, it was the knowledge of Dada in part which led certain mar modern artists after 1945 toward Zen Buddhism. Dada found its way to Japan around 1920 and somehow managed to survive as a preeminent movement for over a half a decade with only six key figures. A right, half a decade is not very long, obviously. So it was a very short lived. Um, movement in Japan, 1920-1925. The movement began with the publication of several informative, though not entirely flattering, articles about Dada's development in Europe, include, including those by the more sympathetic critics Tsuji Jun, 1884-1944, and Katayama Kosong, 1879-1933. In his article, A Study in Dadaism, published in 1921, Koson delineated the three artistic principles required for practicing Dada art, namely brutism, uh, bruitism, simultaneity, and the use of new materials in painting. Another critic, Kawaji Ryuko, published favorable reviews of Dada in the Waseda University Literary Review. There was also Moriguchi Tadi, perhaps the most favorable critic of Dada, who wrote for the Waseda University Literary Review several scholarly articles, including the poetry and painting of Dadaism. But it was Tsuji Jun, the well-established critic and translator of foreign literature, mainly works by Max Stirner and Oscar Wilde, who proved to be the most influential of the Dada advocates, and who provided Takahashi Shinkichi with moral support from the outset, 
Even writing for him the postscript to Dadaisto Shinkichi no Shi, uh, 1923, his collection of uh, Dadaist poems. In 1922, Tsuji published two articles on Dada, Misunderstood Dada, Dada and Talk on Dada, and together with Takahashi, played a key role in Dada's permeation throughout Japan. Though it was Tsuji who, in 1921, discovered Takahashi and soon after made possible his writing career, the friendship between the two did not endure after Takahashi abandoned Dada for Zen. Tsuji instead moved toward nihilism and a kind of sternarian individualism. Okay, so Takashi Shinkichi was a Dada poet at the beginning of his career, and then he moved to Zen in the last 30, 40 years of his career. He wrote uh, exclusively Zen poems. Perhaps the most important writer to have been immediately influenced by Takahashi's Dada poetry was the young poet Nakahara Chuya, the famous uh, poet of the first half of the 20th century, one of the most famous uh, poets of modern Japan, Nakahara Chuya, 1907 to 1937, he died at the age of 30, who would later become one of Japan's most esteemed symbolist poets. All right, symbolism, symbolism came into Japan, I should mention, around uh, uh, with, uh, with the uh, translation and the publication of the anthology Kaicho Ong, which was published in mid-Meiji, I forget the exact date, uh, I'll have to look that up later, 1901, or possibly a few years earlier, and that introduced symbolism into Japan, and it became very famous, and uh, Nakahara Chuya in the 1920s was writing um, symbolist poems. And symbolism had an enormous effect on not only po poetry, but prose as well, so a lot of the modern uh, prose fiction writers were very influenced by uh, symbolism. Keep that in mind as we read this, as we listen to this. Uh, perhaps, so again, starting at the beginning of this paragraph, perhaps the most important writer to have Im been immediately influenced by Takahashi's Dada poetry was the young poet Nakahara Chuya, who would later become one of Japan's most esteemed symbolist poets. Chuya was only 16 when he first read Takahashi's Dadaisto Shinkichi no Shi, which so entranced the budding poet that for several years it was all he read. After Dada, he had more or less disbanded. Tsuya continued writing Dada poems until discovering French poet Arthur Rimbaud, at which point he began to move toward symbolist poetry. Traces of Dada, however, can be found even in Tsuya's later poetry, and he is still considered by many to be, at least in part, a Dada poet. I don't know if that's uh, true, I'll have to look into that. Takashi Shinkichi, the central figure in Japan's Dada mo movement, was born on January 28, 1901, in a fishing village near the city of Matsuyama in Ehime Pref Prefecture in northwestern Shikoku, so very far from the capital of Tokyo. Uh, Shinkichi was largely self-educated, having attended only commercial school from 1913 to 1918, the year he decided to secretly run away penniless to Tokyo. The first peregrination, this first peregrination to the capital would later be recorded in his Dada novel, Dagabaji Jingiji Monogatari. Dagabaji Jingiji Monogatari. In 1920, his poem Hono o Kakagu won a prize in the newspaper Yorozu Choho, the Tokyo based paper that soon afterward introduced Takahashi to Dada through several articles about Tristan Zara and other European Dadaists. But Takahashi soon left Tokyo and returned to his hometown in Ehime, where he found a job at the local newspaper and began to publish various poems. In 1921, the year he became an apprentice monk at a Zen temple, he began a first edition of Makuwa Uri Shishu, which he showed to the newly befriended Tsuji Jun, who would later edit and write the postscript for the 1923 collection, Dadaisto Shinkichi no Shi. During the next year, he made the acquaintance of futurist artist Hirai Kenkichi and novelist, poet, and critic Sato Haruo, uh, famous novelist Sato Haruo, who was very prominent in the um, early Showa period, would write the introduction to the edited 1923 collection. 1924 would see his return to Tokyo and the publication of his first novels, titled simply Dada. 
It was after his, this publication that Takahashi's writings and studies would take a turn away from Dada and toward Buddhist literature, culminating in 1926 with his throwing overboard into the Korean Sea the manuscript for a second Dada novel. Okay, so his uh, Dada writings um, take place exclusively in the Taisho period. As soon as we entered um, the Showa period in 1926, he uh, renounces Dadaism and moves towards Zen after that. Okay, so this is purely a um, Taisho period phenomenon. Keep that in mind. Takashi's transition from Dada to Buddhism, however, may be, have been smoother than he portrays in his diaries, since both both systems of thought hold as one of their fundamental assertions the notion that, quote, the word is useless and poetry is to be abandoned. In the end, Dada, ironically, served not as Takahashi's introduction to European culture and literature, but rather as an introduction to his own native traditions. For the following translation, I have tried to follow the advice of Nab Vladimir Nabokov, who observed that free translation is a term which smacks of knavery and tyranny, and that the primary duty of the translator should be to remain as faithful as possible to the linguistic features of the original work. Okay, I have a longer um, explanation about uh, philosophy of translation in the thesis, but uh, this is just a um, one sentence that I uh, extracted from that. The following translation is intended for the reader interested in poetry. Okay, and now here are the translations. And in the thesis, I include the Japanese uh, romanization along with each transla English translation. I'll perhaps put the uh, romanization in the description to this video below. Um, okay, so here's the recitation. A collection of cucumus mellow poems. Shall we begrease the glee? Might get slippery? Might as well be dead? The girl with the sallow face, blue yellow girl, the girl, unknown man, all those wanting to eat the Odin stew, Odin stew, made from putrefied sun, encephalon, welcome to the dark full Dada hermitage, bulging out of your skulls like rice cakes. Downstairs is red felt carpet, a collapsible dining table and red rice crackers, the metropolis. Okay, note, note that the, my MA thesis includes all of the poems from this uh, collection, but uh, these are just excerpts. I think I skip over several of them. I read perhaps half of the total number. Poem number two. Owing to the sun falling only on my right cheek and my left cheeks freezing, I'm sick of walking. Despite wearing these new tight-fitting drawers, I slip into the embankment choked with stream, steaming manure, without dissolving into tears. Passing under the arm toward the he heart's vicinity, the dim, flickering autumn winds deride both the red dragonflies and me, thrashing us with combs of bamboo, no time to brush them aside. Seeing the river surveyor throw down his snipe seems a terrific atrocity, to the schoolgirl heading home behind me. Pressing my brow against the telephone pole to bear it up, I hunkered down into a ball. Poem 3. When scrubbing the sliding screen, the red cur drinking water, auburn tongue, the boatman's wife, scrubbing tubers, the scuffle over the crucifix, and the greens that flowed toward her. Terrific windstorms, the dreaded premature ejaculations and blackouts, shivering, rain shutter ricketing, the wooden joist collapsed between the mats, out sprouts green bamboo, should our shanty be whisked away so long as we hold on all's okay, so long as we hold on all's okay, filth strewn, a rope tied round its withered reeds, those sliding doors eclipsed my head. But if you're going to buy paper, buy potatoes instead. These fingertips that picked up the scrub brush now felt cold, riding the sliding screen toward the light grey bank out beyond, body quivering, I stopped these cogitations. Poem 4. Night. 
Knight went to buy cognac. Konjak, it should be. Went to buy konjak. Late dead drunk flames rise from the red split wood. Tongue the sky's base, an empty coffin. Morning, a middle school boy came carrying up octopus legs, boiled them in the east earthen pot. Eat the cognac, middle school boy, now that it's moist. Konjak, konjak, I should say. Konjak, yeah, the Japanese uh, jelly or whatever it is. Uh, it's not jelly. Uh, he said that inside the mattress his stomach is cold and hurts. In the midday autumn the sky is towering, bringing hog hogs meat. He came again to wear in the where in the eye half shut with sleep, tooth powder had been scattered. Shall I give up the ghost? Now hear me this, middle school boy, descending the embankment. Marry neither the housemaster's daughter nor the, nor the temple girl, yet feast. Leave no taste on the testamentary, which even without sugar is saccharin. Poem 5. Spermatoria. Mother's child dreamt of crimson rice. Father's granddaughter pissed a green-blue liquor. The son and granddaughter went their separate ways, their dreamage and urine never mingling. Poem number 11. Onanism. It's always afterward the slaughterer feels the weariness. For every filly 200 million spermatozoa was the nursling, nursling tightly held between rich, swollen dugs, not asphyxiated when his mother, full of sin, waxed aroused, watching the figures of copulating horses, watching their very hoarseness? Okay, I'll read this uh, sentence again. It's a fairly complex, uh, grammatically complex sentence, and I, I misread it here. Onanism. It's always afterward the slaughterer feels the weariness for every filly 200 million spermatozoa. Was the nursling tightly held between rich swollen dugs, not asphyxiated when his mother, full of sin, waxed aroused watching the figures of copulating horses, watching their very hoarseness? It is written, The vagina's mucous membrane is presumably an alkaline, though it may soon turn acidic." End quote. People, I remember what they had said. Spermatozoon, still they do not hear agreeable weariness. Two withered legs, innumerable men, for what reason do you not call to one another, Spermatozoon? Deep are the sins of women, Shakamuni's been in error. Is it not that each month but one egg is secreted, I think, one must think, were there, no gra were there no gradation to the sin, we would have planned in advance no penitence, for the murder or masturbation accompanied by that same weariness. Poem 13 Nothing can be done about her lips being thick, women. On the street all is closed, the face of the earth frozen over, the sound of clogs echoing out sound endlessly, clip-clop the glass door at the barber shop, the white curtains, cold pummels the face, the earthen floor at the green grocery, electricity is linking on to onions were faintly quivering. But at my back a figure wrapped in a manteau, clearly visible with a sideways crawl, a faint shadow flowed from my feet and noticed, startled me. A spider crouched into a bowl on the empty elbow of an empty chair. For being so cold-blooded, so overfed, her ichthyosic arms coiled, and so are her thighs, the woman by now had sunk into slumber. Still the two shadows are leaning absently against the electric pole, Still, lighting a smoke, my hand trembles in effort to seize her exhalation. Might she have been an apparition? The young boy holding in his piss, not knowing the stars and moon, 
are already relieved, turns his head upward under the lantern hung from the eaves, under the lat Latin umbrella light, its interminably apologetic face wrapping the scene in a sympathetic hue, but surely there is no reason for a woman to be in each arm. For how many hours had it been, my walking alone? Curiously, the two shadows follow a pace, unsevered. Turning back, turning back, I see the furtive and tardy arrival, the standing at attention of the strangeness of things I try to disrobe, throwing the mantle over the bridge. Poem number 22. Z was not in. His wife gave me a mandarin. It was about to snow. A man, the young woman, hybridus in tow, cried into the streets, Let us heed the will of the Lord. Returning home along the river, I stopped by the outhouse through a loose board blew from below a biting breeze. I bit through the sleeve grass into the orange's pulp. Let us heed the will of God. My teeth are set on edge. Poem 23 The degraded painter Mr. Z despises the spring, fall and future and over the last twenty years his mother has worn out her bat brolly. What is sandwiched between is its shaft, you see, is a pearl. No matter what a thing is, there is nothing that doesn't resemble a meal. Surely we're not to eat the vainglorious hog, but will we, mother, be able to wipe our sweat through the rag, though the rags are yet to dry? Should we not the spring and fall? Not as in cancel. Should we cancel the spring and fall? What will be left to draw with these benumbed hands? I am not a sharp perceiving. I am not a sharp perceiving dog. I can't make out the future's fragrance. Poem twenty four. Dandelions were blooming yellowish. The rickshaw man trotted over, carrying away somebody's lover. Steam trains, ab steam trains absent, and so are the electric trains. A cardiac arrest. This one street town with not that much dust. Kneeling, dejected, he's dead already, isn't he? Poor bastard. Hauled in to the first confectionery shop. Poor mister shot himself in the stomach, having lost the bet, and soon were heard rumors of my return. Can the rickshaw tread reposefully along? Is what I say unreasonable? Can death be avoided if we just stay calm? Dandelions, fond of yellowish tubercle bacillus. Will my lungs ever improve? Poem 28. The socialist to the prosecutor said in a low voice, you feel quite nice when you board the plane, but the dog still got away. Now settle down and tell me, is it really something like the rarefied air, this love and indulgence? The gamut of things seen as one in a cerulean hue. To whom among us hast thou given such eyes? There is but one tongue. Gnawing off that tongue and not gnawing off that tongue are to the two things humans can do. Tell me, Eremite, is there a suicide ending not in death? Would Shakyamuni or Christ revived be only meeker than the dead? Is the oft-said word gramercy any different than matters of conscience? Again I was thinking, would this have been the loincloth of an indigene and you aren't you worried about your family sure there's something to worry about for they too are sometimes my possessions and is it not a paltry thing your ego a kind of vestment 
You ought to remove rage against it with the resolve. For courage will be needed, of course, in an instant, all of forever, and then shall ease the throbbing in the head. Okay, that is the end of uh, these excerpts from that collection, and again, these my translations are taken from Takahashi, Jin, Takahashi Shinkichi Zenshu, the complete works Takahashi Shinkichi, four volumes, published by Seidosha, 1982, and the collection is again titled uh, Maku wa Uri, Maku wa Uri Shishu, and these poems are included in volume one. Okay, I'll perhaps read the entire uh, collection my, of translations at some point, but these are just some samples for now. Uh, that is all. If you have any questions, send me an email. Goodbye.